Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And today we're talking about the best bourbons on ice. Ice, ice, baby. Da -da 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 -da. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. Today we're talking about the bourbons that we found that we like the most on ice. We're right in the thick of the dog days of summer, so seems a, a pertinent topic to the times at hand. But before we get into that, we got to get into what's in this glass, yeah. which we have no clue as to what it is. Nope. That's the whole point of our first sip segment that we do every Tuesday, where we try something out of our blind sample pool totally at random, and we've never had anything in that particular sample pool before. Mm -mm. So there's no familiarity, familiarity, familiarity. Let's all say it together. So we don't know if it's supposed to be good or not, if it's expensive or cheap, if it's hard to find or easy no. to find. We, all we have to go on is what's in the glass. So with that said, let's get into it. Whoa, this one burnt my nose hairs off a little bit. I might have lost a, I might have lost one or two as well, especially on this right side for some reason. Yeah. It, it came in, came in a little hot. Woo, okay. It's, it smells good. What is in there is good, but there's definitely a, Heat. an alcohol element to the glass that is coming through. Not. Not like heat spice, but like alcohol heat. Burn, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't it doesn't smell like proof. It no. just smells like alcohol. Yeah. All right, let's get into the palette and see what we're working with okay. here. I wish I could give some more notes, but I'm not getting much more than the alcohol and the singe. Let's get into the palette. Okay, I get... Whoa, mama. Wood and burn. Okay. That's, that's about it. Wow. Okay, there is an alcohol element there on the palate too. Maybe it is proof on the nose because it's coming across with some proof on the palate as well. It's really sweet at the very end. Yeah. It's, like at the it's, very end. It's just sitting on the palate, tingling. It almost has like, um, when you get something that has a fair bit of alcohol in it, you can get this kind of evaporative feeling mm. like alcohol drying off. That's kind of there. There's like a little bit of a tingle from that. Yeah. But I'm getting a, a little bit of banana. I'm getting a ton of cherry on this. Just boatloads of cherry are coming off of this thing on the palate to me. Yeah. Some I'm, of your classic bourbon stuff too, like vanilla and caramel, but cherry is the most forward thing. I think it, I think this is higher proof than we thought it was. Deceptive, yeah. Yeah, because it's still kind of working its way. Sticking around? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into another sip now okay. that we're acclimated to what's in the glass. Okay. So I still get like oak wood, kind of like popsicle stick up front then burn, then sweet. That's like the order of operations. Yeah. Oak, burn, sweet. I honestly think I might be different order of operations. I might be sweet, oak, burn. Sweetness is all up on the tip of my tongue Agreed on this. disagree, my friends. Yeah, I, predominantly still that cherry sweetness is sticking around. It's coming through with some oomph. Yeah. It does taste good. It seems to have kind of like it, it tastes like a bourbon taste, but it seems to have like a little bit of a rye spice dancing on the middle of the tongue. I've tried to describe this before, but it's almost like a Pop Rocks style yeah. of feeling, mm -hmm. right? Like a sensation. It's more yeah. of a sensation than anything. See, I'm getting that on like the roof of my mouth on the back of my mouth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely on the roof of the mouth. It, it is very coating. Uh -huh. Let's get into one more sip before we give this thing some ratings. Okay. Okay. So this one's going to be all over the map for me. Yeah. Thumbs down on nose. Wow. Because of the ethanol? Yeah. yeah. It was just it, like, it literally, I feel like I burned a nose hair off. Thumbs up on flavor, but just okay on overall experience. Okay. I'm going to give it thumbs up on the nose. Even though it does have that ethanol, I still really like what's there underneath that. And I can work my way around that. I couldn't. As far as the flavor goes, thumbs up. Again, I can work my way around the ethanol. It is really good on the palate, um, but it's not 100% to my liking. I'm not in love with it. Yeah. So I'm not going to go two thumbs up. And there's that ethanol hit. And then overall experience. <sighs> You know, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I could go just okay because of the ethanol, but if you can get past that, what is there is good. And there's some nights where I don't mind this. I think this mm. is more of a night where I just don't want to be slapped it's around. A, it's a mood pour. Yeah, I don't want to be yeah. slapped around by my glass of whiskey. And tonight, that's what this one is doing. I'm a little bit, feeling a little bit more chill tonight. Mm. And this glass is a little bit more brash. It's a little rowdy. Yeah. So let's find out what we've been drinking. Okay. This is... A lot of stuff's making sense now. This is Heaven's Door 
and this is a store pick, 124.7 proof. And yeah. $50. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a lot of proof for not as a lot of money. Right. These are usually five year, or in the past, I should say, they've been five year MGP, okay. but they're transitioning over to a little known fact. They're transitioning over to Tennessee whiskey from Tennessee Distilling Group out of Columbia, Tennessee. Okay. So not a lot of people know about them. A lot of times when people hear about Tennessee whiskey, they think they, Jack Daniels or George Dickel. Oh, and I think Jack, Jack Daniels, Daniels doesn't source, but George Dickel does. This is not Dickel. This could be that Tennessee Distilling Group distillate. Or it but, could be MGP. But right? it could be MGP okay. as well. It does kind of come across like a five year MGP, like a little bit of brash and very sweet. But Tennessee Distilling Group is actually kind of in that same wheelhouse. Mm, okay. And Funny story, if this is Tennessee Distilling Group Distillate, I got to try the 2021 William LaRue Weller at my local store, and then I got to try a different Heaven's Door pick coming off of the William LaRue, and you would have just expected it to fall completely flat. And I'm not saying it was anywhere near as good as the William LaRue Weller, but the sweetness and the punch and the concentration of flavors mm -hmm. on the sweet side of the equation do match up to what I'm experiencing this okay. glass and it it was a respectable comparison. Okay. Like it, it wasn't better, but it was respectable. Okay, so, so let's get into our scores. Okay, so retail side of the equation, I don't have any clue what Heaven's Door distribution is like nationwide, but around here you can find it super easily. Okay. Their bottles, in my opinion, are absolutely atrocious. It's Bob Dylan owned, it's a celebrity whiskey technically, but what's in the bottle is Source. I was gonna say, it doesn't quality. matter what the bottle looks yeah. like. It's oh. source quality whiskey, high proof for fifty bucks. Okay. Where are you at on the retail side of the equation? So I'm not like I'm not anti high proof, but I'm not usually like yeah, give me all the high proofs. But to get something this high proof and this full of flavor, even though it's not necessarily my flavor preference, for fifty bucks, dude. I said I'm all over the place on this. I'm gonna continue that trend. I'm gonna give it two thumbs up on retail. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. For uh, the flavor punch, the price, and the availability in our market, it's two thumbs up. Yeah. Now, if this particular single barrel were sitting in front of you, this one's from Elixir, which is notorious for how good their picks are. Okay. Would you buy this for 50 bucks to have around? For 50 bucks, I would. It would be like a special pour. It would not be something I go through quickly. So it, it gets a thumbs up. I'm not going to 100% get it, but I would probably mostly get it. So thumbs up. Okay. Knowing that they're switching over to the Tennessee Distilling Group stuff, I think that's their plan to primarily go with them exclusively. I'm going to give it two thumbs up as well. Mm. These picks, I mean, you're getting a single barrel pick, big proof for 50 bucks, like you said, and yeah. it's available in our market. And you get the single barrel process where you can try different ones. Yeah. Some may be better than this, some may not, Right. but that's kind of the fun of single barrels. So two thumbs up on retail, but as a consumer, would I buy it again or not for 50 well, we bucks? We didn't buy it. <laughs> right. Well, yes. Yeah. Shout out to Brian Waller out of Wheeler's Raid Distillery here in Tennessee for hooking us up with this yeah. sample. But would we buy it? Would you buy would it? Would I buy it? Yeah. 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 If, so if I up? were in our thumbs up, thumbs up on consumer score as a consumer, would I buy it? If I were in a store and in Tennessee, we can try before we buy if the store has an open sample bottle. So if a store had an open sample bottle of this and I got this experience out of the glass and it's sitting there for $49.99, I'm grabbing a bottle yeah, for sure. It's a good deal. That's a solid pour. And if you think the way we review stuff over here is solid as well, then be sure to check out the video description below for a link to our Patreon. Over there, we do two additional uncut videos every week. Yeah. They're a little bit more laid back and they're a lot like this first sip that you just saw us do. We also do all kinds of stuff with our Patreon community. It's like the interactive element of the channel mm -hmm. where you can get plugged in, do some blind flight nights with us, sample swaps, get in on giveaways. All kinds of good stuff. You can check that out down below. And if you like this video so far, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe, come on, do it. Also check out the link to our merch down there. We got, I'm wearing some, yep. some shirt and hat goods that we have. Yep. I don't think that's the way you were supposed to say that, but nonetheless. A little monochromatic look going on yeah, here with the Navy. Yeah, fighting some FOMO. So we got all kinds of shirts, hats, tumblers, all kinds of stuff over there on the merch site. You can check that out if you're interested in some stuff in whiskey 
wearables. With that said, let's get into our main topic, okay. talking about the best bourbons on ice yeah. that we've experienced at least. So far, and so that far. could change. It could, because we don't drink stuff on ice a lot, mm -hmm. primarily because when we try stuff on ice, it tends to just get watered down yeah. and fall apart. And it just kind of ends up tasting like bourbon flavored water. So that's a problem for us. Like mm -hmm. if we're going to drink bourbon, we want it to taste like bourbon yeah. or we want to have a full blown cocktail. We don't usually sip on the rocks, but we have found that there are a few bottles in our collection that we have tried on ice yep. and like quite a lot. Yes. So we're going to bring one of them out right here. I'm going to sip it. Okay. Well, I was going to sip it too. And this is not that, but the first time this happened was with Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. Now, the whole deal with this stuff is you're getting a barrel proof product and it's big and it's bold. And anybody that knows flavor notes knows that Jack Daniels can kind of be banana bready and very banana forward. Mm -hmm. But drinking it on ice was a hot summer day. Yeah. Last summer, it was me. I said, I want some flavor, but I don't want to just sip neat right you now. You wanted something cold. Right. I wanted something cold, but I still want a big flavor. So I said, you know what? Let me grab Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. I put it on ice. Go see our Jack Daniels video about whether Jack Daniels is bourbon or not, if you're watching this and taking some umbrage with what I'm saying right now. But nonetheless, I put this on some ice and I was blown away. Yeah. This is one of the few products on the market that I like better on ice than I do neat because the banana yeah. note takes a back seat and it gets really creamy vanilla flavors mm -hmm. that come out of it. I just love it on ice. Yeah. Before we go any further, we'd like to take a minute to talk about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes. I actually used Skillshare several years ago to up my photography game. One of the coolest things about Skillshare is that when you sign up, you get to input the things that you're interested in, whatever that may be, and then they will present the courses that best fit whatever you're looking to learn. Yeah, so this time around, I'm actually really looking forward to learning how to make the most of my time. So I'm getting ready to take a class with Greg McCune called Simple Productivity, How to Do More with Less, which is right up my alley. This girl is obsessed with productivity <laughs> and there are a lot of productivity classes on Skillshare. If you're interested in checking out Skillshare for yourself, the first 1,000 people that join using the link below will get a one month free trial. Get your learn on. Learning's the best. Who doesn't love learning, especially when it's free? So again, check that link in the video description below. I would absolutely put this in the upper echelon of stuff on ice. Should I put this over here? Yeah, you can. And so then the next product that this happened with was Maker's Mark cash drink products pretty much across the board. Yeah. It actually first happened with the regular Maker's Mark cash drink, the little squat bottles that look like the regular makers, but we've done this with store picks. Yeah. We've done it with even some of the limited edition, limited release makers. And there's something about Maker's Mark on ice that just works. Again, there's like a creamy vanilla that comes out yeah. in the mix. It, it doesn't water down the flavor. It just kind of like changes the flavor profile, but not. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It, it tastes different. It doesn't taste the same as it does It doesn't does taste neat, the same, but, but it, it still tastes good. Yeah, it still tastes good and, yeah. and flavorful. It right. doesn't taste watery. Well, oh, and I was going to say, the thing about Maker's Mark is all their whiskeys are uncut, unfiltered whiskeys. Mm. At least they're cast drink stuff. So this is 108.4 proof, this particular store pick and it has not been chill filtered. And when they chill filter products, it strips away some of the fatty acids. Mm. And when you have a product that's non-chill filtered, when you put it on ice, it freezes those. You can almost see it in the glass. Like it kind of mm -hmm. turns like white and cloudy. And those are flavor compounds that are being unlocked Yeah. that you don't get when you sip it neat. New and level. Yeah. You just leveled up. Right. Well, you like leveled sideways into like an alternate world. Oh, the, the, the ice world. Uh, the upside down. Yeah. But Maker, Maker's Mark cast drink stuff is fantastic on ice. So we're big fans of that. Yep. And for the same reason, that creamy vanilla note comes out. And in the regular Maker's Mark cast drink, it hides some of the nuttiness. Just like the Jack Daniels, the banana goes to the background. In the Maker's, the nuttiness goes mm. to the background. And you just get this creamy vanilla goodness. But we hear you if you're watching and you like stuff on ice and you don't want to be drinking 110 to 130 plus proof whiskey. You want something easy sipping. Yeah. This is where things get difficult for us because it's like you can take something like Evan Williams 1783 and put it on ice, but yeah. it just falls apart. Yeah. Almost everything 90 proof does. It just gets so watered down so quickly and it tastes like bourbon flavored water. Yeah. But we have found that just regular old Four Roses single barrels 
do really well on ice. Yeah. And that's what's in the glass right there. It's good. The high rye content, I think, stands up to ice a little bit better. Mm. And this is already a pretty fruit forward profile. Most yeah. of the single barrels are. Some of these single barrels can have a little bit of mintiness in them. Some can be a little bit more oaky, but all those flavors work really well on ice. Yeah. And then I feel like on ice that you get a little bit more of a pronounced caramel note. I was gonna say this tastes like honey and caramel. Again, we're talking about something that is different on ice than it is in its regular form. Yeah. But honestly, it isn't better or worse, it's just different. It's just different. Yeah. yeah. So on a hot summer day, if we need something that's lower proof that we want to sip on on ice, yep. it's going to be Four Roses Single Barrel. Great stuff. Can't recommend it enough. And I will say this isn't official other stuff. We'll get into that just in a minute. But this big ice cube that I put in here, that is just from some Amazon silicon molds. And we use filtered tap water. We actually used to use sink water to do it. Oh, I, can, use, I use the tap water for, or the water from the fridge. The filtered water. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you can you can go as high or as low as you want with your ice, but we definitely like these big cubes. Mm -hmm. They because, melt slower. Yeah, they melt slower. And you can get one of these things for like a couple bucks. Yeah. It doesn't cost very much. I might, I'm giving Josh some work, but he'll go find some and put some uh, links uh, in the description below yeah. for you guys. Yeah. If you guys want to know exactly the ones we use. Yeah, I absolutely will. I think the ones I bought were a cube of six, like a six tray cube, like big fat cubes. And then some spheres as well and I, I, I can't I stand the spheres i remember the spheres they're hard to they fall apart yeah. they crack in half but the cubes are solid so i absolutely recommend that so yeah that's it hit yeah. us up below what you like the most on ice yeah. or if you've tried any of these three on ice and what you think about them would love to hear your thoughts on that let's get into some other stuff for the time being okay. and this one is long 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 overdue we talk about nashville on the channel all the time because we live in Nashville. We do, we and, live here. Yes. This and we, is where we live. We get emails about stores to visit in Nashville and places to go eat places and to, bourbon bars to go to visit do and, yep. and all that stuff. And we have been long overdue to put together a Nashville guide, a stuff and whiskey, Nashville not guide. inspired, but a stuff and whiskey Nashville guide. Yep. And if you're coming to visit, check the video description below. Down there, we're gonna have a link to a Google Drive document and it's going to have store recommendations. It's going to have restaurant recommendations. Honestly, there are bourbon bars in town, but restaurants are really the best place to go. Yeah, restaurants. Here. And we'll give you a, a little sneak peek of a pro tip. The hotel lobby bars slash restaurants are the best places to go get good food in downtown. Yeah, if it's on a weekend and you're trying to just grab a bite and you don't want to fuss with the like reservations and waiting for a long time. Mm -hmm. Everybody's staying at the hotels and going out to all the other swanky mm -hmm. restaurants and you can just swoop right in on those yep. hotel lobby bars. Specifically the ones in downtown. In the, the heart like, of downtown. In the heart of downtown. They're yeah. kind of boutique hotels. Yeah. They have excellent lobby bars and restaurants down yeah. there. Yeah. We can particularly shout out the Noel Bar and the Bobby Bar and the Bobby Hotel restaurant. Yes. All very, very good. Check the guide down there if you want some more information on Nashville. And this has been needing to be put together for so long, we can finally just email people this instead of typing up fresh lists every yes. time somebody sends us a question. And we'll keep it up to date as we find new places and yep. have other recommendations too. So it'll yep. always be the most up-to-date information. Absolutely. That's the beauty of a Google Doc. And the beauty of you watching this channel is that you give us a little bit of a platform. So we're going to wrap up the channel or the video content for today. Yep. And we're gonna say before we get out of here to check the video description for our email address, the platform that you give us is something that we use to raise money for mental health. Yep. So every October we do a fundraiser that benefits To Right Love on her arms. And we do that through GoFundMe and to help raise money and funds, we need bottle donations. So if you would like to donate a bottle to the cause, you can contact us at stuffandwhiskey at gmail.com. Last year we did 15,000, we're trying to get above and beyond that this year yep. with your help and we can't do it as without a community. You. Absolutely. So hit us up. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Till next week. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. This is not the right way to say the intro. <laughs> what happened there? My brain just short circuited. With that said, let's get into our main topic. Okay. I don't, what are we talking about? I don't even know. Oh, that's okay. Wow. If we're going to drink bourbon, we want it to taste like bourbon yeah. or we want to have a full blown cocktail. We don't usually sip on the rocks, but we have. Or <laughs> 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 <laughs>
And so then the next product that this happened with was Maker's Mark cash drink products pretty much across the board. Yeah. It actually originally happened with the regular Maker's Mark cash drink. <laughs> what is wrong with my words today? Well. <laughs> you just start that over. Yeah.